Look, there's a wide range of jetting kits and carby mods and power things available, but today we are just looking mostly at simple do-it-yourself mods that can be done very cheaply and give you great performance and economy without an obnoxiously loud bike. And you know how we feel about loud bikes. So we start by ripping off the side covers, the seat and the fuel tank. We take off the fuel hose. Okay. These little grommets here, you want to take these out before they fall down somewhere. When you pull the tank off, make sure these rubbers don't fall off. Once the fuel line is off, you'll see this little bit of white plastic, an annoyingly small fuel filter. Replace it with a decent sized fuel filter as per this photo. This is a critical mod. This is your breather for the vacuum carby. If this gets dirty or blocked, you're gonna be wearing your carby out, your bike will stop running. So we recommend servicing this every time you service your air filter as well. The beauty of adding extra foam is not only extra protection, but you never have to service the inside one. You can just pull this out easily. If you don't modify your DR650, leave the snorkel in. Loosen off these bolts so we can swing the carby around. Very important to loosen that. One thing is the choke cable here is very, very fragile. That's why we've loosened that. This piece is plastic. Okay. That's plastic in there. It breaks very easily or strips. Now we swing the carby around. We remove the screws on top. Guys often replace these screws because they're, they're rubbish. We lift the top off. There's a spring in there. Very important O-ring. Don't let that go missing. The spring is to push your carb slide back down again. There's our needle. This is our slide. Okay, so looking in the top of the carb here, this whole thing is called the slide guide. If you look very carefully here, you can see those holes each side. When these holes disappear, that's when it's time to replace your slide guide. That should normally last you 20 to 30,000 kilometres, but if you let this get dirty, it'll be way sooner. Now, if you do taper the needle, what you can do is take your snorkel out, but don't enlarge this air hole. You will get increased air intake, but just enough to suit a tapered needle. That's assuming you don't change your main jet. The problem with the stock needle, it's too fat down here, so the bike's too lean off idle. What a lot of guys do is they will drop the needle here so that they get rid of that bog that happens off idle. Problem is, then it's crap everywhere else to the rest of the rev range. What we're going to do is taper the needle to get good fuel air mixture right through the rev range. So what we're going to do here is grind this little bit of plastic so it'll change where it sits in the carby. Now down in here there's a little shelf. We have ground the plastic on this so the needle's going to sit lower. It'll bypass the shelf and be positioned better. So this doesn't need to come completely to a point, but fairly close. The important thing is just getting the taper here. Don't take too much off, but get, get a shape roughly like this. And you really want to look after this diaphragm is if you do get a little nick in it, the bike is not going to operate properly. Your, your slide won't have a vacuum to work against. Your throttle will pretty much stop working. Once the engine's running, the vacuum created is what determines how quickly the slide's going to come up. We actually drill an extra hole here so that we'll get a better throttle response. 
So the quicker this slide comes up, the quicker the fuel comes in, which is very similar to what a pumper carb does. We will also drill out this second hole. Drilled in from the side first, then straight down. And enlarge the second hole as well. So we had just one two and a half mil hole. Now we have two three millimeter holes. Because we have shaved that bit of plastic and it'll sit further down, we don't need to make any adjustment of the needle position. For Australian conditions year round, this is a good compromise now. Suzuki put these terrible Phillips bolts down on the float bowl and uh, these can strip very easily, burr very easily. An important thing given how tricky these bolts are, they're not Phillips, they are actually JIS. And this is a JIS screwdriver, Japanese industrial standard. Once it comes, it's fine. Now we swing the carby around the other way so we can access this screw. Again, we're using this tool just to risk not burring it. Always check for water and dirt in the bottom of your float bowl. We flip this around more to access the main jet. 140 main jet if you leave this stock, but if you're going to a 150 main jet here, we will cut the air box. Main jet coming off. Main jet's back in. As mentioned earlier, make sure this O-ring's still there and get a torch just to make sure the needle is definitely sitting off the shelf. Bingo. This is 112 mil long, we'll be cutting it down to 100. So because we've shortened this spring, it means the throttle response will be faster, similar to a pumper card. When you throttle off, it's also backs off a bit gentler and smoother as well. A smoother ride all over. Important thing to watch out for when reinstalling this pipe, this hose here can drop off and we can see it has. This hose can also kink and you can get the same issue as if it's not on. It's a hose that you want to check every time you move this carb at all. So we tighten this back up, we tighten this one back up and then tighten the carby back up itself. You probably can't see it with the camera, but there is a notch there and a notch there to allow you to line the carby up correctly. And now it's time to drill the air box. One thing to remember, these nuts can come out easily if you're not careful. We usually just put some sort of cloth in here prior to cutting. This is two inches or 51 millimeters. Now one thing we do is we keep this as far away from this breather as possible. If you go near this breather, you're going to interrupt the airflow, which we think is the main cause of surging. Now Gordon's done a lot of experimenting with smaller holes, bigger holes, different positions. This is the one that he's found best. And this size hole works well regardless of how much further you go with the main jet size. Very handy thing in dusty conditions is put one of these Chuck Super Wipes in here without filter oil or liquid. Tuck this around properly and the beauty is that when you throttle off the dust will actually just fall off and into the bottom of the box. It won't stay in the cloth. Canadians love this sort of stuff because they're so lazy. Now the thing is this weld in here sometimes is really messy and it always restricts the diameter going into the pipe and it creates turbulence. You'll get a significant power difference simply by grinding this nice and flat. Now the trick though is not to take the whole thing out. This is what holds these two bits together. So you probably want to leave about one mil of weld still there, minimum. You can take it more than this, but this is what's recommended to leave just to keep the strength there. If you really want full performance, of course, you can grind it smooth on the inside, but add weld around here. Even if you haven't modded your bike, it should be at one and a half screws out. Once you do these mods, it will normally be one and three quarters to 
turns out. This can be plus or minus half a turn depending on temperature and other factors. We highly recommend the Suzuki GSX R exhaust for good power gains, a great sound, but far quieter than aftermarket exhausts. According to dyno charts we've seen, these mods all provide about a 10% improvement across the rev range and make a big difference to fuel economy, better starting and how smoothly it runs at low revs. Just do this up snugly, not tight. It's a great idea to lock tight anything on a DR when you're screwing it back up. These are the capped bolts that come with the GSX arm up one. Now the muffler's on properly, we tighten all these remaining bolts correctly and including the header pipe bolt. These bolts in particular, you want Loctite on. These vibrate easily. Now we put this on prime after the carby's been drained, just so it replenishes easily. An important thing to remember is these little holes here, they go on little tabs to make sure the side covers stay in securely. Now because the engine's running so much better now, we've got to reduce the idle speed. That's better. And now we do a test ride. What we're looking for is a little bit of fluffiness, a little bit of hesitation, just around quarter throttle. If so, we may need to richen it a bit and change the needle position.